What is the right time to deload and how do you do it? It's a little different in bodybuilding. Okay, so first of all, I'm no expert in strength or powerlifting. And most of the really good work that I've seen on this subject was in strength athletes. They had blocks where they would gradually increase their intensity. Bodybuilding is a little bit different though. Bodybuilding is, is very different. I am, uh, I am of the belief that this should be very instinctual. And you should be looking for cues on when your body's kind of had enough. She's feeling awesome. I don't care if it's been four weeks on the training program or eight weeks or 12 weeks. I'm going to tell him or her to keep going. I mean, when you're in a groove in bodybuilding, you keep going. You don't slow down. Now, there will come a point because you can't train really hard forever. You just can't. When the weights will start feeling heavier, the pump will start going away. You'll start feeling a little tired, a little more lethargic. You won't be sleeping as well. You won't be as excited to go to the gym. And this won't be a daily thing. It won't be just for one day. It'll be a couple days and you notice it for a week and something just seems off. That's your body telling you, hey, you know, maybe I need to back off a little bit. So I try to listen to my body for those cues, the weakness, you're losing strength, you're losing explosiveness. That's your body kind of saying, hey man, time out, take a step back. Because remember, in bodybuilding, it's always you take a step back, you take two forward. How do you deload? The way I deload, personally, is I, I usually reduce my sets about 20%. So let's say you're doing 20 sets for your back. You're gonna remove 20% of those sets, so that'd be four sets, you take it down to 16 sets. That's number one. Number two, I don't take anything to failure. Okay, your nervous system's probably a little fried, that's why you need a deload. So instead of going all out and going to failure, we pull back so your nervous system doesn't take that beating. So we reduce our sets and our volume, and we reduce our intensity. In a week, you'll start to feel great, or in two weeks, you'll start to feel great, You'll notice everything's coming back. You'll feel your energy coming back. You'll feel your strength coming back. And when you feel that, guess what? You're ready to crank again. So if I had to just generalize, I would say most of the deloads are probably around two weeks. Usually after, at the end of two weeks, they feel great. When, uh, whether you're overtrained or whether you're maybe just being lazy, like, you know, kind of what's the difference? Because how you answer that is going to determine, you know, whether you train hard or, or, or not. Overtraining itself is something that's not crystal clear and it doesn't happen quickly. I see people sometimes do a workout and, or, or, I, or I hear people sometimes say, well, that workout, he overtrained that workout. Well, there's no workout that you just overtrain. Overtraining is kind of an accumulation of events that occur. You're training muscles before they can recover too frequently. And uh, that's that could be one issue. Or outside your muscles, it could actually be your central nervous system. So your central nervous system isn't getting a break. And it's very important with, when it comes to producing force and things of that nature. It's not, so again, overtraining, it's not something that happens overnight. Um, some communication, and it's gonna let you know that you're headed into overtraining. And the first one is, it's a lack of, performance and it feels real explosive and it feels real good and then the next week maybe it feels kind of slow all of a sudden the effort that it takes for you to push that bar seems to be much greater um, and then the week after it might seem even heavier and then it might seem even heavier to see the pattern that's that's a key uh, component that I look at right there something needs to be adjusted now the second half of that is often there's issues with sleep who all of a sudden are super tired and they want to sleep a lot, or the sleep problem is the opposite. They're tired, but they can't fall asleep and they get insomnia. What's going on in their life? What time they're getting to bed? The tiredness that I had today was probably more of a circadian rhythm thing. It had nothing to do with being overtrained. And I was like, well, I'm not overtrained because I was super strong and everything felt really good. So, but sleep issues are another thing you really have to look at carefully which is recovery issues. You know, maybe you haven't changed your diet, maybe you haven't changed your uh, training program, but now all of a sudden you're getting more sore. But I always think that recovery problem is a key indicator. And you might not be overtrained at that point, but when you can't recover, if you don't adjust your training program, the last one is chronic injuries. And it can be, typically it's like tendonitis is in my forearms. Uh, specifically on the lateral side, 
Um, I get this lateral epicondylitis. It feels almost like the tendons are kind of frayed. And <clears throat> that's not so much a nervous system when that's just kind of your body's breaking down. All these little injuries start to compound each other and people try to work through them and they get worse. And then there's some compensation for one injury. I think it was one of my teres muscles and I think it had an impact on my front delt. And then my problem with my front delt I think resulted in a pec strain that was all related. So you can kind of have this snowball effect where one injury leads to the second injury, leads to a third injury. But if you're experiencing all four of these things, you probably need to back off. You're not lazy. I don't really have a good answer on telling you the difference between the two. Um, but if you feel like you're starting to get overtrained, then just back off your intensity, increase your calories, get a little bit more rest. Just do that for two or three weeks. Let your body kind of catch up. Don't take any sets to failure. Cut down your volume a little bit. Um, it's kind of like an active uh, recovery, really. If you're body's banged up, it's injured, you're not sleeping, get out of the gym, enjoy yourself. There's nothing wrong with getting out of the gym for a week or two. Any muscle that you lose, you're gonna gain right back, plus your body's gonna feel better. And you know, and the most important thing may not even be the physical aspect. Mentally, you might be better. You have, I appreciate your support. Thanks, and we'll see you next video.